everyone, I'm Madison Connerton and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. Today, Pastor Rex will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, Could I Help? But first, please join us in some praise and worship to glorify the Lord. Talent forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem his love. and forever I am. I know I shall see him in beauty, the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Read him, read him, read him by the blood of the Silent forever I am. Would you like to turn the lyrics around there a little bit? Got a little fancy on you. Wasn't expecting that, were you? love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all come to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all God's will over spread a sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all, when we all 
that you have and what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus will sing and shout the victory. I'm pressing on the upward, upward way. To my time gaining every day. I'm praying and I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on high. big idea of our message is using your gift of help. The title, Could I Help? Have you asked that yourself when you come to church this morning? 
Could I help? And we will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 11, and then we will add verse 28. Verse 4. There are different kinds of gift, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gift of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirit, spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And He distributes them to each one just as He determines. Verse 28. And God has placed in the church first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gift of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Perhaps you may be thinking, what is my gift? Have you discovered your gift as a believer in the Lord? What is my gift? Do I really have a spiritual gift from the Holy Spirit? And I will assure you and I will not doubt, yes, you do. Every believer in the Lord was given a gift. Discover your spiritual gift or gift with an S, okay? Again, the purpose of this gift is clearly given to us in verse 7. And again, I would like to read verse 7. It says, Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So that is the purpose why the Holy Spirit has given each one of us gift. It is for the common good of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we say if it's the church, it's not the building. We are the church. The people are the church. And so each one was given for a, a gift for the common good of everyone. So, therefore, the title of our message this morning, Could I Help? Let's start with verse 4. There are different kinds of gift, but the same Spirit distributes them. So it is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit produced a spiritual gift of grace in us. Okay? The Holy Spirit will come into you, indwell you, live in you as a son and daughter, as a child of God, and out of that it produced something that will help for the common good. So there are different kinds of gift. The Holy Spirit distributes them. I like it because if the Holy Spirit is in you, then he has distributed in you, given you, a gift. So everyone has one or two or more. We want more. <laughs> but more means more responsibilities as well. Okay? More responsibilities if you're given more. Discover what gift you were given and use them to build God's church. So could I help build God's church? And the answer is, yes, you can. Verse 5. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. The word service or serving is the same word used in the early church for the office of deacon, according to Philippians chapter 1, verse 1. So the Greek word in its various form is used to indicate service to the Christian community. If you use your gift to serve in the Christian community, that is the gift of service, serving. One example is in serving 
tables as illustrated in Acts chapter 6, verse 2 to 3. Do you remember Acts chapter 2, uh, or chapter 6, I should say, the disciples preach the good news and a lot of people uh, were uh, dedicated themselves to Jesus Christ and were baptized. That was when the early church recommended choosing seven deacons. The requirement was they are filled with the Spirit, meaning the Spirit is in them, and wisdom. Their ministry is to help in food distribution. Well, maybe we will say uh, that's, a good, that's a good work. It's in, from the kitchen to the table <laughs> kind of ministry. One of them was Stephen, the first martyr. Remember Stephen? He was stoned to death. And the other one is Philip. Okay, And the other five, I forgot their names. I'm sorry. Okay, now verse 6. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. In this verse, verse 6, gift was described as different kinds of working. The word working in Greek suggests power in operation. That's what, that's what it means. It produces obvious results. The power of working comes from God. It doesn't come from the person it, himself because he was given the gift and that gift was used to serve and God is praised and God worked in the lives of the people. Verse 7, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So every member of the body of Jesus Christ has been given some spiritual gift that is an evidence of the Spirit's working in their lives. So don't tell me that you don't have one, not, not a gift, because I'm sure that you claim that the Holy Spirit is in you. So all the gifts are intended to build up the members of the Christian community. Let me read to you 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 11, and this is what it says. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Gifts are not to be used for selfish advantage. I will repeat that. There's no amen on that one. It says, gifts are not to be used for selfish advantage. As some in the Corinthian community of believers were evidently doing. That's one of the problems in the church in Corinth. They use their, their gift for, their self, for selfish gain. So obviously, not everyone has the same gift or have all the gift. You have some, but not all. You have one, but, not, but there's no, no, nobody uh, can say that there's, I, have, I was not given one. Everyone have one or several of them. Be thankful for the one that you have. You cannot choose. It is distributed to you. This is your gift, okay? Not like nowadays, if you are given a gift and you don't, on, on Christmas Day or your birthday, and you don't like it, you open it up, go back to Walmart or go back to Myers, and you can exchange it for the gift that you like or you can exchange it and they will re reimburse you. <laughs> Not with the Holy Spirit, okay? It's different with the Holy Spirit. You are given one and you appreciate and you are thankful for what he has given you. The important thing is for you to use it to help build God's church. That is the purpose of gift. So let's ask again our question this morning. Could I help? Yes, you can. Okay? Verse 8. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. So the gift of 
message of wisdom and message of knowledge. These two are very important in the church, like every other gift are important. This gift meet the need of the Christian community when knowledge or wisdom is required to make decisions or to choose proper courses of action for the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gift of healing by that one spirit. The gift, the gift of faith. We can argue that as believers, we have faith, right? Right, yeah, you're nodding your heads. Me too, I agree, 100% that we have faith. The faith that was being given here as a gift is not saving faith. Okay? We have saving faith. We are saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ because we have faith in Him. But here, this faith is not saving faith, but faith to meet a specific need within the body of Jesus Christ. If there is a need, you can come in if you have that gift and use it to build God's church and God's uh, community. That is the gift. And then the gift of healing. Ooh, maybe we wish we have this gift of healing, right? Every single one of us, in Jesus' name be healed. And they will keep the, 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 the deaf uh, receive their, 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 their hearing and the mute uh, instantly speak and those who have cancer uh, uh, got healed. Gift of healing. And God is still work miracles in the life of people. I believe that with all my heart. Literally, the word healing is in pl plural form, healings. It may suggest different kinds of illnesses and the various ways God gifted believers to heal them. And so if you have that gift, you are not above others, okay? Even though that is the desired thing uh, uh, personally, but no, use that gift to build the community of the Lord Jesus Christ, the community of the church. If you have that gift, use it because God can use you in serving others. Verse 10, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. Woof! That's a lot in verse 10. Let's take it one at a time. The gift of miraculous powers literally means deeds of powers. That's what it means. In scriptures, miracles are events that in the eyes of those who experience and or witness them clearly experience God's power purposely at work in a way beyond the normal or the, or the expected. If somebody... Got, got healed, that's the miraculous powers of the Lord Jesus Christ, not of you, not of those who lay their hands on the sick, but because God did it, not us, okay? And if in uh, the case of an accident, like one of my experiences, uh, we were late for something, and why we were, are we late? There's this big, huge rock, boom, right in the middle of the road. God miraculously make us late. I don't know why, in order for us uh, not to be down on that part of the road when the rock fell down. Or a miracle of going into a mission trip and the documentations are not working well. And then we prayed. And after we prayed, God said, go to the authorities and get your documents. And God miraculously touch the hearts of those people in the, in the government offices to provide the visa or provide the passport or provide the documentation, the permit for us to go into a mission a trip. See, those kinds of things God works out in among his children. Miraculous powers. The gift of prophecy. It is a message communicated to a believer by the Holy Spirit. There are two meanings of prophecy. One, foretell is to predict what will happen in the future. 
Second meaning of prophecy. Fourth, tell, is to communicate what God has already done in the past. The Bible is the complete message of God for our salvation. He already told us what we need to do for our salvation and what will come in the future. We don't need to add anything. And so nowadays, we are to forth tell what God did for us. Okay? And so when we preach God's word, when we tell others about God's word, we are telling them, we are prophesying to them what God has already done for our salvation. Okay? Okay. Now, the gift of distinguishing between spirits. Since there can also be false prophecies that come from evil spirits, this gift is necessary in order for the church to distinguish the true from the false. This is very important in the church, distinguishing between spirits. You know the false doctrine being told you. And God has given this gift to certain people. The gift of different kinds of tongues. Since the Greek word tongues is elsewhere used to refer to languages and dialects, some understand it to refer here to the ability to speak in human languages not learned by other means. As the apostles did on the day of Pentecost, if you will remember Acts chapter 2. Remember Acts chapter 2? There are a lot of nations represented in Jerusalem that day. And then the disciples stood up and in one voice they proclaimed God's message of salvation. And every single one of those nations understand God's word. But the speakers were all Galilean. How could, how could that be? Where does the miracle came? On the ears of the listeners or, or on the mouth of the speakers? I don't know. The Bible did that say. But if we will believe in the different kinds of tongues, the Holy Spirit can do a miracle in the languages, in the dialects of people, both those who are speaking and those who are listening. So this is what Nazarenes believe or emphasize to believe, okay? Others believe that in 1 Corinthians chapters 12 all the way to chapter 14, the term tongues refer to both earthly and heavenly languages, including ecstatic languages of praise and prayer. They are not, they are not saying false doctrine. Because if we, you will read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to 14, that could be interpreted that way too. Okay? That some people are given that kind of gift. But there should be somebody interpreting that for them in order for it not to be a chaos among those who listen. Okay? The gift of interpretation of tongues. So these two go together, the different kinds of tongues and the, those who interpret, interpretation of tongues. It is the ability to make intelligible the sense of what is, is spoken in a tongue so that hearers can understand and they be edified and God glorified. Okay? Okay, so those are the gifts in verse 10. Let's go to verse 11. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. So the Holy Spirit sovereignly determines which gift or gift each believer should have. We do not have the option to choose. Either you were given one or several. That's a lot right there. It all depends on the Holy Spirit. But remember, the more you have, the more responsibility you have as well. 
And now let's go to verse 28. And God has placed in the church first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gift of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. It seems like verse 28 repeated everything that was uh, mentioned in the first verses, in the previous verses. But the list here is different from that in verses 10 to 11, 8 to 10. Paul listed three gifts from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. So Paul imported something out of Ephesians to what was mentioned here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And took five spiritual gifts from chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. So Paul seemed to categorize the apostles, prophets, and teachers designating their importance in the church. Nope. Every, everyone, according to the Apostle Paul, are important. There is no higher or lower gift, okay? There is no important gift, and I am the lowest gift. Nope, that is not the case. In here, everybody is important. Then, the following five gifts were mentioned. Again, we will mention that Paul randomly mentioned the gift and not rank them in importance. So all gifts have the same importance in the church. This morning, before we will pray for our stewards and trustees, before we will commission you, uh, our stewards and trustees, I would like to emphasize the gift, the gift of helping here in verse 28. In our message today, I would like to just give emphasis to the gift of helping as mentioned here in verse 28. It seemed like the gift of helping is a very unique gift, a very important gift. Helping is any act of caring for others. In the New Testament, emphasis was given to helping the aliens, immigrants, widows, Orphans, poor, needy, sick, and imprisoned. At first, I said, why imprisoned? What's wrong with people who are imprisoned? They deserve what they have to be in prison. But during the time of Jesus Christ and Apostle Paul, prisons are not given supplies by the government. They imprison you and let your family and friends supply your needs. They supply your food, they supply your blanket, they supply everything that you need. That's why Christians are tasked to help those who are in prison, okay? So what is the gift of helping? The gift of helping is taking the responsibility of helping others as their own responsibility. You, you need help and I'm taking that responsibility I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the gift of helping. So this relieves others to do other ministries in God's service. So in the book of Acts chapter 2, once again, the gift of serving was emphasized because the apostles needs to do, need to do something else. Okay? This gift is valuable to the body of Christ because it enables others to become more efficient in the use of their spiritual gift. So as we have mentioned earlier in Acts chapter 6, when the church of Jerusalem grew so rapidly that the apostles found themselves overwhelmed with meeting the physical needs of the people. And some believers were already complaining. Well, in the church they are complaining too. We, we, we cannot remove that from, from churches. Somebody needs to complain in order to complete their day, isn't it? <laughs> okay, now. So the church appointed seven deacons to provide this service. So the apostles may be released from this ministry of serving and be able to minister more effectively to the church with the teaching of the word and prayer. So they let the apostles did the teaching and the praying and the seven deacons serving. And that divided the responsibility in the church. 
So God has provided spirit-filled members who have the spiritual gift of helping to do these things. So examples of this ministry, I don't know if I missed some of these ministries, but you can add more to my example this morning. Some of these ministries might include arranging chairs for a worship service, preparing the elements of the Lord's Supper, preparing coffee and pastries before the morning worship, preparing refreshments for fellowship, manning the sound booth, doing the PowerPoint, teaching Sunday school. If someday we will have a church van, driving the church van to pick up people to come to church, riding the lawn mower, operating the brass cutter, washing windows, preparing the birthday cards, anniversary cards, and get will soon cards, calling on those who are not able to come to church, and praying with them on the phone, gathering clothes and food for victims of disasters, and wearing a smile while doing the ministry of helping. I think that's the best part. I like to see someone smiling while helping others, not grumpy. <laughs> hey you, you're not supposed to be in that line. <laughs> we need to be smiling while doing service. So result of the gift of helping. When a church is blessed with members who are not only willing, but who also find joy and satisfaction in doing all these things for the Lord, then the work of the Lord will proceed with much greater effectiveness and productivity. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree with that too. So when you find a brother or a sister with a gift of helping, recognize them and appreciate them. Say thank you. You can see that here in our church body already, church family, and say thank you to them because usually they work behind the curtain, okay? And so open the curtain for you to see them and say thank you to each one of them. And right now I will take that opportunity to thank each one of you for doing the ministry of helps in our church. So let us personally seek God's will concerning our service to Him. Ask the Lord what your spiritual gift is and how He wants you to use it to do your part in building up the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. If the Lord should impress upon you that you have the gift of helping, ask the Lord to show you what areas of service He wants you to serve in. And as God directs His will for you, commit yourself to do His will. So let me ask you the question again. Could you help? Yes, you can. Please stand up and join us. Kalimot akong kunin yung mga pangalan ng mga stewards sa kanya. Let the weak say I am strong Let the poor say I am rich Let the blind say I can see What the Lord has done in me Let the weak say I am strong Let the poor say I am rich Let the blind say I am rich 
Thank you, Pastor, and thank you everyone for tuning in to our Sunday morning service. If you have been blessed by today's message and you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the bell so we know if of our future videos. Please join us at the next service. We welcome you and your entire family and find us right across from Skateland here in Ohio. It's Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. We pray the Lord may bless you so that you'll become a blessing to others.